Women in the workplace, look how far we've come. Just over a hundred years ago, it was illegal for a woman to keep the money she earned. Up until the 50s, most married women were not allowed to work. And it wasn't until the 70s that they won the right to equal pay. But the girls of yesterday fought hard for financial freedom and independence. A gift that the girls of today surely treasure. I don't understand them people that love to work. There's a new generation of girls, and they're not exactly grabbing the opportunities their go-getting grannies fought for. In fact, for some, unemployment is a lifestyle choice. It is £103.70 job seekers for half an hour at the job centre. Pretty good wage, isn't it? 19-year-old Leanne Duffy from Brighton has completely opted out of the world of work. If I had my way, I'd never work. The worst excuse I've given for not going to work, that my dad died. And 22-year-old Marie Mercer from Yorkshire has left every job she's ever had because she thinks they're beneath her and she refuses to do just any job to pay the bills. Old people's homes, don't want to wipe the bums. I love old people, but I couldn't do that. So that's ruled out. When it comes to work, neither Marie or Leanne live in the real world and both dream of bigger things than the nine to five. My ambition is to be famous. You just get to look good every day. If I had that lifestyle, I would be happy. Really happy. I would like to have been an artist and be exhibiting my work, living the life <laughs> in the limelight. But with their dreams going nowhere, both girls are facing an uncertain future. I have no inspiration. Basically, I have nothing. I don't really see a future. <laughs> but all that is about to change, as for the next week, both girls will be joining the workforce. Bye, then. You OK? Yeah. They'll take up jobs for two of Britain's toughest bosses, women who have grafted their way to the top and now reap the rewards of their success. The people that want something for nothing are totally unrealistic. It does not happen. Liz Taylor, owner and managing director of one of the country's top events companies. My business is my life. And Margaret Manning, award-winning CEO of digital advertising agency Reading Room. I can be very, very direct. Either you're in or you're out. Can these two self-made women convince these girls to get off the sofa, get off benefits and join the workforce? It's all too much. There's too much going on. I don't like it. In a week, yes, we have a, a, a tough challenge. Can't help me if it goes tits up here. Will the experience be enough to inspire Leanne and Marie to become working girls? It's 9am and 22-year-old Marie Mercer has travelled from York to Manchester to start her week's work. I'm a little bit nervous but excited. I just hope it's not really difficult. Her job has not been chosen at random. She'll be working at a top events company. She doesn't know it yet, but high-end hospitality is in her blood. Marie's great-great-great-granny ran a seaside boarding house and her guests were the elite society of the day and she worked around the clock arranging their entertainment and tending to their every need. But can Marie hack it in the same industry as her great-great-great-granny? Not what I was expecting. <laughs> I was hoping for something a bit more glamorous, but it doesn't matter. Meet Marie's new boss. Liz Taylor is the owner of one of the country's top events management companies, TLC. I love my work, I'm passionate about it. As a single mum, Liz started the company with just £200 in her pocket. Today it turns over £4 million and she counts Manchester United and Coronation Street among her clients. I've had to work very hard to get where I am today. It was tough, but you overcome the obstacles and just get on with it. Liz is now the go-to girl for celebrity weddings and events. She receives hundreds of emails a week from party planning hopefuls who all want a piece of the action. But she relies on a core staff of just three. Good afternoon, TLC. 
who do everything from folding napkins to coordinating high society weddings. Give Charlie that bottom message and get her to phone her back. Thanks. Just over a hundred years ago, women were not allowed to own their own businesses, but they fought for their rights and the law changed. Women have been fighting their way to the top flight of business ever since. I'm proud of what I've done. I've built a really successful company. It's the best feeling. It is the best feeling. And Liz's hard work has paid off. Hi, girls. She enjoys a thoroughly luxurious lifestyle. Cheers. You have to work hard to get something out of life. And it doesn't all have to be financial. Your own self-esteem and you command respect because you're a hard worker and you're successful. Liz has worked for everything she has and has little patience with people who don't share her work ethic. I get very frustrated with individuals who feel that they're entitled to be given all this on a plate because it's not going to happen. Liz demands the best from everyone who works for her. Speak to me. And Marie will be no exception. I will expect the same of this girl that I expect of my employees and if those jobs are not done properly then she will have my wrath to deal with. Hi, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I'm Liz Taylor, and um, I'm the MD of the Taylor Link Corporation. We're an events management company, and we work for some really hot people. And uh, you're going to be working with me for the week. It's really exciting. I've been looking at the pictures, and it just looks amazing. So, your first job was um, as a senior sales advisor. Mm hmm And you stayed there for two years? No. Well, did you or didn't you? No, I didn't. I can't bear people who lie. And okay. I will not tolerate people who lie. Yeah. Do you want to work, Marie? I don't just want a normal job, because, as you can see, I don't like them. What special qualities do you think you have got for somebody to give you a not-normal job? I can't stay somewhere if I don't like it. I just have to go. I just run. Since leaving school at 16, Marie has had over 40 jobs, but has quit every single one of them, and she now does absolutely nothing. I wouldn't say I'm lazy. I'm just picky about jobs. I wouldn't work in McDonald's, even though I love it. I just couldn't do it. Old people's homes, don't want to wipe the bums. I love old people, but I couldn't do that. Pretty much every normal job has got something that rules it out. Marie lives at home with her mum, stepdad and boyfriend Fletch, who all work full time. I see the jobs in the papers and on the internet and give you them and you just don't know anything about it. Because they're never any good jobs. Me and mum argue a lot and it's always about the same thing. It's always about jobs and money. We've tried all the incentives to get Marie working. We've bought her a flat, but nothing's come of it. Marie lost the flat when she quit yet another job and couldn't afford to pay the bills. She and Fletch had to move back into the family home, which is putting a strain on everyone. I would have liked her to have been settled down, nice house, nice job. That's what I want for her. And I was hoping at 22 she'd have got that. And now her parents desperately want their home back and Fletch wants them to leave. They will come to a point when she needs to bring some kind of money and so we can survive. But still Marie refuses to get a job and since she doesn't claim benefits, she's completely dependent on Fletch to pay for her to live. I don't really have anything of my own anymore. So if I want anything, Fletch has got to provide it for me. There is one thing that Marie would consider doing. I'd love to be famous. To be a celebrity, it would just be amazing. The lifestyle, the, the fans, everything. You can obviously afford really nice clothes and things. I just love it. I've got a list of things I want and I can't get. I can never afford it and it's so upsetting. While Marie only dreams of being famous, her brother is a world-renowned DJ who lives and works in Hollywood. But unlike Marie, he is grafted to get where he is today. I'm so jealous of him. It's just what I want my life to be like, basically. I want to be the star. She feels like she's not cut out for just doing a day-to-day -day job. She just wants to be a star, be in the limelight. In a way, sometimes I feel like she thinks 
it's just going to happen. Dreaming of being famous has already cost Marie her independence. She's bleeding her boyfriend and parents dry, and unless she does something soon, she risks being stuck at home forever. It would just be terrible to see her in the same position in three, four, five years' time. With 40 left jobs and all those lost opportunities behind her, Marie must make the most of this chance to sort her future out. Who do you look up to the most and think, that's really what I would love to do? Like Cheryl Cole. She's just got the whole lifestyle that I want. Why should you have that life when you're not prepared to put anything into it? I don't know. I mean, telling it me as it is, mm -hmm. Sounds pathetic. What I think you really need to do is get that big chip off your shoulder and realise that the world is not waiting for Marie Mercer. That is what makes me angry. That and the fact that you've lied in your CV and that because you're bone idle makes me angry and that is what I'm going to knock out of you. OK. Mm -hmm. So come with me. Oh, gosh, I'd like to get hold of her and shake her and give her a right slap and get, get her grafting with the rest of us. I'm a bit scared, to be honest. I'm a bit scared of her, I'm not going to lie. This week, Liz has three huge events on, including a high-end wedding for one of her VIP clients. Everything that Marie does this week will be working towards the wedding. Her first job is painting the easels that will display the table plans at the wedding. I want a really glossy gold easel. Right. OK, so there you go. Definitely not feeling the glamour of the job. My finger hurts. I'm not used to getting my hands dirty. I'm pissed off. Marie might not be enjoying her first job, but if she ever wants to move out of home and on with her life, she needs to make the most of this opportunity. There's too much pressure, I can't handle it. The week is going to get harder. The pressure is going to be put on her. If I have one reservation, she won't go anywhere near the production of this magnificent wedding because I'm not compromising my business for this lazy young lady. Oh, for God's sake. I think I'm done. I'll um, go tell Liz I'm done and wash my hands. So is Marie's handiwork up to Liz's high standards? I think one of these legs has not been painted at all. I mean, how bloody difficult is it? Marie? Yeah? The legs have not been sprayed. Each mm -hmm. one has got a wooden leg that hasn't been sprayed. It's really? a simple task. Spray them properly and come back up and tell me when they've been done properly. Oh, However it important it may not seem to you, it's important to me, so please go and just do it and finish it properly. <laughs> Can I just go to the toilet? I don't do crying unless it's something really to cry about. I'm going to be very tough with her because she needs a firm hand. She needs somebody to tell her what to do and she needs to be able to take that on board and do it without throwing a dummy out the pram. No one really tells me how. <laughs> right now, I don't really want to come in tomorrow. Another dreamer headed for a dose of reality in the working world is unemployed 19-year-old Leanne Duffy from Brighton. I like doing what the hell I like because I don't really care about anything, really. I just want to be able to do what I want to do. Just like Marie, Leanne has quit every job she's ever had. If I don't want to do something, then generally I won't. It's my way or no way, really. <laughs> Leanne is now completely broke and lives in a squat with two fellow squatters. This is the way I can have a roof over my head without having to work. And when it comes to putting food on the table, Leanne has a novel way of providing for herself. A little loaf and some baguette, all packaged. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it, is there, really? Every time I get to the bin and I get a real good bag, I'm like, yes, nice one. What a legend. <laughs> But even this hardcore squatter hasn't completely rejected society. Some parts of the system do have their benefits, like Job Seekers Allowance. 
I'm pretty excited about getting a nice little lump of money without any effort. It is easy money, really, in the grand scheme of things. Leanne hasn't always been a squatter. She used to live at home with her mum, a care worker. She's always been not afraid to stand out from a crowd. Age 11, we moved to schools, um, and she found it quite difficult um, to, to fit in. But Leanne went on to get four A-levels, including an A in photography and a B in art. This is what I did at college. I should carry on. I just stopped. I always despise. She's a fantastic artist and a, a, a great photographer. Initially, she was going to go to university, but she chose not to, to, not to take that up, and that made me very sad. At some point in her life, I think she didn't believe in anything. She lost it. She just needs um, to find the way again. For Leanne, the reality of a no-strings existence is beginning to set in. Without the daily comforts of hot water, security and sanitation, squatting has its drawbacks. You don't really ever have the security because, yeah, you're not supposed to be here and there's always that edginess of, that like, it's not ours. You know, we could get kicked out at any time. Where are we going to go next? In terms of the grand scheme of my life, <laughs> I've got no... Yeah, no vision of my future. It's crunch time for Leanne, already beginning to regret turning her back on her talents. The longer she opts out of society, the harder it will be to get back in. It's time to see if she can find meaning again in the world she has rejected. She's headed to London, where she'll be working for a top digital advertising agency. She doesn't know it yet, but she comes from a long line of women who worked in creative industries. Over a hundred years ago, her female ancestors worked as printers in Liverpool. They were experts in print design and layout for newspapers and books. Leanne is about to follow in her family's footsteps, but she will be at the cutting edge of online communication, where design and layout are everything. I think I'm going to struggle a little bit, especially because I'm tired already. <laughs> I haven't even started. I'm tired. Margaret Manning is the award-winning CEO of Reading Room, a top digital advertising agency who specialise in creating campaigns for the internet. People that work for me are constantly being challenged and pushed out to their comfort zones. A working mum of two, Margaret started Reading Room from a small flat in North London. Today it has offices all over the world and a turnover of 11 million a year. I'm an very, very competitive person. I started this business when I was 36. I did it myself. I do expect a lot from people. That's just really absolutely not acceptable. It's got to happen by five o'clock today. The online advertising business is all about design and layout. Accounts are won and lost on the strength of their creative imagery. So Margaret demands the very best in presentation. It's absolutely vital to us that our presentation, in all respects, is absolutely totally top-notch. Throughout history, advertising has been dominated by men in the top positions. And while women have worked their way up, a recent report found that just 22.4% of management positions were held by women. So the fight continues and Margaret is leading the way. I feel it's so important for women to have role models who have been successful. There are too few of us actually going around banging that drum. Running an award-winning worldwide business has afforded Margaret a penthouse apartment in the centre of town and membership to some of London's most exclusive clubs, including the Ivy. I thoroughly enjoy all those financial trappings of success. That is not the key driver that I have. The key driver that I have is a sense of achievement and a sense of fulfilment. Just being able to look and say, I did that. And Margaret is keen to pass on the same sense of fulfilment to her newest recruit. I really want the girl to leave empowered, knowing that there are a world of possibilities and opportunities that at the moment she hasn't seen. Hi Leanne, um, come in and uh, grab a seat. So um, I'm Margaret Manning, I'm Chief Executive of Reading Room, uh, which is a digital advertising agency and you're going to be working with us here for the next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got your CV. You mentioned you live in a squat? Yeah. And um, you eat out of bins? Sounds worse than it is to be honest, but yeah. Do you feel that's a great way to live? 
I said, I, I don't want to be like that forever, but it's kind of like the moment. I don't really know where else to go with it, so it's like, yeah. You've got some really good grades at A-level? Yeah, I did all right, yeah. <laughs> and after college, what, what next? Um, do you want to well, what else I do? I juggle most of the time. That's what you I juggle? Do. Yeah. And you it's impressive, isn't it? <laughs> so it seems like your biggest achievement at the moment is juggling. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and when you left your previous jobs, mm. what reasons did you give for leaving? I walked out of most of them. You just walked? Yeah. But With no explanation? Yeah, no, nothing. You feel proud of that? Oh, no. What we're going to get you to do is we're going to start you off as a runner. OK. And you will be put under pressure. Mm -hmm. And we will expect you to do things that you're not going to enjoy doing. But that team deserves your respect. You can't walk out on them. Mm -hmm. Margaret's scary. <laughs> yeah, at first, as soon as I seen her, I was like, oh, God. I think we have got a very tough challenge. Four A-levels, Duke of Edinburgh Gold. That puts people into quite a top bracket, and yet she's doing nothing with it whatsoever. At the end of the week, Margaret and her team are pitching new online advertising ideas to one of their biggest clients. If she's to be involved, Leanne will need to prove herself at every level, starting with the office run. Oh, I just can't. I'm fucked. Leanne has been sent out to get vital office equipment, which is everything from art supplies to crisp supplies. Oh, man, she must not move a muscle that they do. So you can imagine that, you could just be like, oh, I want my favourite packets of crisp, go and find it. I can't be fucked. To like this round in London, Margaret's probably sat down sipping coffee, scratching her ass. Leanne's been gone for well over an hour and the office are wondering where she is. Hello, Sam. Really? OK. Well, do you want me to come back and forget about the rest or do you want me to go and pick up? OK. OK, not to worry. All right, bye-bye. No, it's like any of my other jobs. <laughs> you just get to a stage that's like, I've had a fucking... <laughs> don't want to do it anymore. Leanne's finally made it back, but office manager Sam is not impressed. I can't believe I've had lost. OK, um, in the future, would you mind giving me a call on my mobile? Because basically lots of people have been inconvenienced. OK. Too much, too much going on. I don't like it. But everyone's bloody moaning at this, moaning at that. It's like, fuck's sake, I don't want to fucking do it. She's going to face a very big uphill battle. She's obviously an incredibly intelligent person, but the idea of hard work is still something that she is struggling with. It's 9am in Manchester. Yesterday, Marie's first day ended in disaster. Having walked out on over 40 jobs for a lot less, will she turn up today? I am actually quite proud of myself for coming in, but let's see what today brings. Marie's first job is folding napkins for the weekend's wedding with events organiser Frankie. How have you found Liz? A bit scared. <laughs> That's because it's her name that's on the line, you yeah, see. Yeah. And, you know, it's all about quality and it's understanding what's important. Well, you can't do that one. See that? She'll go mad if she sees that. See, I wish I had the attitude that you've got. Marie spends the next two hours folding napkins. I keep looking at that bag and there's another 50 and I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get them done. And, like, oh, it's just doing weird in. I'm being treated a bit like a skivvy. I'd rather do other things than this. It's not changed my mind yet about work. I don't think I can enjoy work. Folding napkins might not be Marie's ideal job, but everyone starts at the bottom. I'm trying to help her. Uh, I'm not trying to trip her up. I know I'm demanding, but I'm not asking anybody to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. She's here to learn, and I'm here to give. 
Marie has now been folding the napkins for over six hours. I don't get how people can be so OK about doing shitty jobs all the time. Like, it doesn't bother them at all. I don't get it. <laughs> Marie might be fed up, but can she really afford to be so picky about jobs when she's stuck living with her parents with no money of her own? OK, how have you got on while I've been out? It wouldn't be a job that I'd pick to do. You can't expect to go into something at an equal level to somebody else who's been there for five or ten years. Come on, you've got 50 there and you've got 20 there and it's half past four, so really I'd like them finished by the end of the day. She just only wants to do what she wants to do. She can't make excuses. She is the master of her own destiny. She's got to do something about it and that's really what I would like to get through to her. Liz is reminding me of everyone else that asks me why I'm not working and why I've not done that and why don't I just go do it. I just want to say shut up, I've heard it all before. And Marie's not the only one struggling with life in the real world. It's Leanne's second day of work following in the footsteps of her ancestors in the creative industry. <laughs> I think it's a minor miracle that I'm awake, to be honest. Minor miracle. Oh. Leanne straight to work researching the charity Dogs Trust. At the end of the week, Reading Room will be pitching new online advertising ideas to the charity. And if Leanne proves herself, she'll be part of the pitch team. We win our work in competitive pitches. The differentiating factor between us and many of our competitors is the little attention to detail points that is going to set us apart. Margaret has called a meeting with the creative team to talk pitch tactics. Occasionally, we actually completely redecorate a room for, for a client pitch. You can make it look like anything you want. This team is going to be decorating the room for the pitch. It's got to be ready for at 3 o'clock on, on Tuesday, so you haven't got a great deal of time. It really is down to you as to what you want it to look like. All right? Yep, absolutely. Leanne and the creative team are straight on to thinking of ideas for the room design. I was thinking how good would it be? A big kennel. Right, OK. <laughs> like a dog kennel. Personally, like, I'd rather see a dog in the park than in a kennel. So I mean, like, in for me, like, put a dog in a cage is a bit more negative than a park. Yeah, the idea um, would be that we would basically dress it up like a park. We could even have leaves on the floor. I think it's better than a kennel. I think, like you said before, it's too negative being enclosed in a kennel. You go out and take the pictures. Yeah, I'm that a right? bit rusty, but yeah, yeah. yeah we'll see what it is. Yeah, give it a good old park. With the team keen on Leanne's idea for the room design, she's off to take photos of a park to decorate the room. I haven't fucking taken photos for ages, for so long, so long. The last time Leanne took photos was for her photography A-level. She got an A, but has done nothing with it. Now she's finally getting to use her talent. Yeah, I'm enjoying work. <laughs> yeah. And she's not the first Duffy woman whose work will be used to create a standout design. Her ancestors did it through print, and now Leanne is doing it online. Much to her new boss's approval. Everybody actually really enjoyed working with you today. They really did. You, you've got such a lot of potential. I do. I just want to cry. It's horrible. I don't know, I think most of the time is that I know it as well. It's just like, what are you doing? You're just being a waste, basically. Just got myself in a right old rut, because once you get into this kind of thing, it's like, I don't know, it's difficult to get yourself back out. <laughs> it's definitely shown that you know, I'm not truly happy with what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah, and I do want to do well. <laughs> Good. You're right. Yeah. Oh, I do. Okay, I think it's quite easy as well to, when you don't really have a part in like, well, society really, when you squat, like, you don't pay rent, you don't really answer to anyone, you, you know, you don't have a job. So you, you kind of just like avoid 
person, really. And I think it's quite easy then to think, you know, it doesn't really matter, does it? You know, I just plod along and, yeah. And you, I think you forget your value as well, to some degree, probably. Yeah, I think maybe I forgot, I forgot my value a little bit. With Leanne beginning to question her place in the world, she's off to discover where she comes from. She's meeting the programme's history researcher, Jamie Broom, at a printing factory. Let's meet you, Leanne. Come inside and have a chat. Yeah, of course. Jamie has spent months tracing her family tree and has found out that Leanne's creative streak runs in the family. Do you know much about your family history at all? I know absolutely nothing. Nothing. OK, well, I mean, yeah. I've been looking into your family history, so I've got a family tree here. As you can see, we've got five women here that are all in the printing industry. I don't know if you know sort of what that involved or... <laughs> no, not really. Over a hundred years ago, Leanne's female ancestors worked in printing factories in Liverpool. They worked in the design and layout of printing newspapers and books, just as Leanne has been working on the layout of campaigns for the internet. It was, you know, it was a skilled job, a complicated job, but it was also a very male-dominated industry. The printing unions were very, very strong. They didn't want women in their industry because yeah. women got paid less, mm. so they were kind of... They'd bring the wages down for men, you know. Yeah. They were also worried about the whole kind of bringing down the skill level. If, if a woman can do the job, then, you know, it's obviously not a skilled trade, is it? They kind of... But your, your ancestors made it, obviously. I mean, they yeah. must have been real strong, independent women, these, these women, to, to, to fight their way in. I like that. Yeah? <laughs> independent <laughs> women, like in that zone. <laughs> Can you kind of see this, that kind of character and spirit in yourself, perhaps? Yeah, I guess so. I don't really see the difference between girls and boys. It's yeah. like, I don't care, like, I can probably just as strong as you do me. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I'm a girl, like, I, yeah, I kind of, yeah, I like that. That's mad. Maybe that's where I get it from. It's really funny as well, because when well, I've always done artistic things as well, I've always had this obsession with like, old type and stamping mm. and all of that. It's really funny. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> and actually, that's in my blood. Yeah, it's mad to think I'm working in the, well, pretty much exactly the same field. It's cool to be the modern day equivalent of my ancestors, I guess. So Leanne is finally finding some inspiration for work and up in Manchester, Marie has managed to drag herself out of bed for a very early start. It's like quarter to six in the morning. I don't want to be up, I want to just go back to bed, to be honest. I don't even know how I got up. Liz has asked Marie to be in for 6am because the flowers have arrived for the weekend's events and she wants Marie to help florist manager Annalisa get them ready. The flowers have literally just arrived now, they're all going to be offloaded, we're all going to check them off. You're going to be working with uh, the rest of the team. With literally thousands of flowers to get through, it's all hands on deck. In that case, I want the one. Do you want me to take them in? OK, Marie, that's all the flowers offloaded. We're going to move on through and we're going to start conditioning. Basically, what you do, holding firmly. Oh, my God. Any questions, come and ask me or ask one of the guys, yeah? OK, Thanks. thanks. Marie gets straight to work, removing the thorns from the flowers. It's pricking me. I don't mind it, actually. I think because everyone else is doing it, like, I don't feel like I'm doing, like, the skivvy jobs or, like, they're giving me, like, the shitty jobs because everyone else is doing it. Morning. Good morning. Hi. How are we? Very well, thank you. Of course. Yes. So did she turn up? She did. And? On time. Yeah. She's pitched in. And has she enjoyed she's, it? Yeah. She's kept up to speed. She's doing really well. Surprised by Marie's different attitude, Liz wants to know what's changed. How have you got on this morning? Have you enjoyed it? I have, actually. Have you? I like it down here, cos, like, everyone's doing the same thing and it's just really nice. I'm glad you've enjoyed it and I'm glad you came in. What I'm not glad about is the fact that as long as you, everyone's on the same level as you, you're happy. Mm. And or at least a few people on the same level. Which I don't I, know why, but that's just how I am. I'd um, like to get hold of you and give you a right good shake. 
What do you think I could do to help you to feel different? I don't yes. know if it's possible now to change. Why? Because you're 22. I wish I could yeah. turn the clock, clock back and be 22, cos I'd said it's in the house and I'm a bigger empire than I've got now if I could have done it at 22. Mm. Like, I get stuck so in a rut. Like, if you think about it, I've been in this rut since I left school. And so it kind of just gets the norm and you just think there's no hope. I don't give things a chance. The only way that you're going to be successful in anything is if it has cost you to do it. I mean, all those singers and actresses mm. that you aspire to, they have all done bar work. Mm. They've worked in restaurants. You've just got to want to be successful. I can't change the past now, so what do I do? You're master of your own destiny. You know, it is now, it's 9.30 on Wednesday morning, we've only got three more days. To really, really prove to yourself that you can achieve something and enjoy it and do something for yourself. And, and I'm going to follow that through. OK. That was really good, actually, to have a chat with her. Like, I need to change my mindset. She can, she is inspiring in a way, like, and I think she could help me, yeah. At the moment, I've got a young girl who feels really sorry for herself because nobody's knocked on her door and offered her a job that she wants. I am going to try and um, knock that out of her. I'm absolutely determined to turn her life around. So serial quitter Marie has made it through a third day of work and she's on her way to meet Jamie, who has traced her family tree back for five generations and has discovered that quitting does not run in the family. OK, Marie, so we've been looking into your family history. It, it looks like you've got quite a lot of people in the hospitality industry in your, in your family. OK. One ancestor you might find quite interesting. So we've got your great-great-great-grandmother, who's Jane Cogill. She was living in a place called Filey, which is just near Scarborough in Yorkshire, yeah. on the coast, and she was a lodging housekeeper. Filey, where your great-great-great-grandmother was, it was it was exclusively for the most fashionable, the celebrities of the day, the kind of mm. royalty and, and dukes and duchesses. The fact that she was, like, mingling with the celebs and yeah. stuff is, like, really interesting and stuff. Could you imagine yourself, you know, doing that kind of job, looking after these people? I'd rather be one of them than looking <laughs> after them. Back in them days, I didn't think women did work. I thought they were just housewives and stuff. As a lodging housekeeper, Marie's great-great-great-grandmother Jane Cogill's job was not just to accommodate her guests, she would arrange all of the entertainment for the visiting VIPs, including day trips, dinner parties and balls. What's even more interesting about her is that she's not from a wealthy family. We found her age 20 and she's a domestic servant and she's gone from there, by the time she's 30, to running this lodging house. At this time, women were not allowed to own their own property, but in 1882, the law changed, and soon after, the business was signed over from her husband to Jane, who was the boss for the next 30 years. We know, in fact, that Jane had nine children through her life. You are joking me. <laughs> How the hell does she do all that? She can, she can feel proud, I think. I do feel proud of her, yeah. She sounds like Liz. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, she's, like, strong and, like successful and she knows what she wants and stuff. Weird, she might be watching me right now. <laughs> she could be, yeah. <laughs> She's probably like, oh, God, how is she related to me? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to pass this on. <laughs> she must have been, like, a strong person, determined, basically the complete opposite to me at the moment. So the job she was doing from 20, a maid, she probably thought that was shit in her head and she probably didn't want to go in every day and, like, it's got me thinking that against all the odds she still did it, so I could maybe still do it. Marie's not the only one experiencing a change in attitude towards work. Back down in London, Leanne and the creative team have been grafting all morning, decorating the room for the Dogs Trust pitch. Oh, that's not gonna go, is it? Come on, get your guns out, Jane. Come on. <laughs> Bada bing, bada bong. Well done. It's absolutely brilliant. I love what you're doing. Absolutely love what you're doing. Does it good? Room prep over, it's time for pitch practice with account manager Lee. Okay, talk to me about the concept, I guess. 
of the room. Yeah, I mean, I understand it's a park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what we were thinking is, um, yeah, what can we make this quite fun and a bit, yeah, what the client's going to like, really. So we were trying to bring the park to the boardroom, really. Okay. So, but yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, isn't it, really? Yeah, the, what, what, what's the next step? Like, in terms of understanding that it's about dogs' trust, what happens then? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And I really hate putting you on the spot, but we've got the pitch tomorrow. So rather than just tell me what I can see, tell me why it's relevant. Uh, well, I was just going with the park theme again, basically, yeah. Right. If the client was walking in right now, I would let her make tea and say hi. That's it. Dogs Trust is a huge account for Reading Room, so if Leanne's ever going to be allowed to pitch, she'll have to swat up on her presentation skills. Fortunately, Lee is more than happy to help. Just talk about the things you found out that were, that were interesting to you. I can't even remember. Stand up a second. Tell me what you found out. First of all, um, I found out that everybody I spoke to um, tend to be emotionally connected to it, so naturally they want to tell their friends and family. Just, oh, that's all you have to say. Just tell them what you found tell out. Tell them as it is. Tell them as it is. Uh -huh. Exactly. I think she just needs to be brought out of her shell a bit. She's obviously really bright. I think the absolute key thing is, is that it comes from you. Yeah, yeah. I want her to be involved. I want her to have ideas. I want her to be in that room. After a few hours of being whipped into shape by Lee, Margaret wants to see Leanne for a catch-up. I mean, you've just seen now how much effort goes into a pitch. Did you realise, do you think? Yeah, there's a lot of work. A lot of people involved as well, that's the thing. Don't know if you're, if you're aware, there's been quite a bit of debate about, you know, you standing up and, and pitching, because it's, it's really important for us. And uh, you've just got a massive thumbs up from everybody. You've got a place on the pitch team. Because you've earned that. I'm really, really impressed. Thank you. I just need to keep my head on. Like I said, a little bit of practice in the mirror. <laughs> and it'll be fine. You'll be absolutely brilliant. So just make sure you practice. I think Margaret, she's kind of flipped my idea of bosses round a little bit. She's got like a proper presence, I think. And yeah, I do like her, really. <laughs> Like it's been so long now since I've just done nothing and you kind of like end up being a little bit like nothing to do and yeah, I don't know, I feel a, a bit a bit of worth, you could say, a little bit of worth. I'm quite excited really about going into work tomorrow. Leanne's not alone in her newfound sense of purpose. Up in Manchester, Marie has been inspired by her hard grafting granny and spent the last few days trying to prove that she's prepared to work hard too. She's obviously in my family, so I must have it in me somewhere, so I'm going to try and get it out of it. It's the day before the VIP wedding and Marie is working with events manager Charlie to get the reception venue ready. Marie, once the table's in, I need to see you moving really, really quickly. Yeah. Set. The bride is one of Liz's most important clients and Manchester's high society will be turning out. With a whole floor of a hotel to transform, there is a lot to do and everything from napkins to name cards must be perfect. I am working the hardest I've ever worked in my life. Maybe I have been selfish in the past, whining and moaning and stuff. I'm not even thinking about how I feel. I literally just want to do the jobs and do them right and do them as fast as I can. It's the big day tomorrow, and Liz wants to check Marie is up for the challenge. Was there anything today that you really were pissed off about doing? No. I literally could not have put any more effort into today. I, have, I could not have tried any more. How do you feel about that? Amazing. Do you? Because I know that I've done all this to the best of my ability and well you have done to your best of your ability and you have put 100 percent in it and i am immensely proud of you she is definitely up there proving to me yeah, that she can yeah. do this she's self-motivated i have no hesitation about her working at the wedding i am more than confident she will be an important part of tomorrow's event up until now marie has been too proud to do just any job and her and boyfriend fletch are stuck living with her parents Life for Liz couldn't be more different, and she wants Marie to see the rewards work can bring. Come in. This is my favourite room. Well, Do you like it? Yeah. It's you? gorgeous. <laughs> I'm I jealous. Love <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm wishing I lived here. <laughs>
If you want to live the champagne lifestyle, Marie, you've got to learn to drink champagne. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so talk to me about shopping. Come on, every girl likes to talk about shopping. Oh my God, I love shoes. Do you? Okay, which is your favourite shoe? Favourite shoe? If I could own a pair, it would be Le Boutons. Would it? What size are you? Five. Okay. Come upstairs. <laughs> This is going to really make you want to work, OK? Oh, no, this is what I want. I want a walking wardrobe. There you go. Oh, my good Lord. Have you ever tried a pair on? No. Go on, get them on your foot. No, my feet might smell. Get them on your foot. <laughs> Come on. I want to see what you look like in a pair of Louboutins. Come on. Oh, God. And they've got the red bottom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Do they suit me? They do suit you. They look <laughs> fabulous on you. Well, there you go. If that's not an incentive for you. That is definitely is an incentive. <laughs> Still don't think whatever job I get would be able to afford Yes, you know, why not? I couldn't... I've never had a pair. I mean, you know, we all, every, we've all got dreams. I'm so jealous. But as you say, I could do that. I could get that, couldn't I? Well, I did. When I started in business, I didn't have a pot to piss in. But I worked. I worked so, so hard. And I'm proud of what I did. I'd love you to come back and be all dressed up and say, look what I've done. All of today and tonight has just made me even more determined. It's kind of made me think a bit more that jobs can get you the walking wardrobe and the Louboutin shoes and stuff. So I've had a really lovely that. evening with her. It was important for me to do it so that she could see what the fruits of my success have given me. And um, I think it's had a very positive effect on her. Down in London, Leanne has made it to her last day following in the footsteps of her female ancestors in the creative industry. It's the day of the big pitch, and she's in, going over her presentation. Yeah, everything has to be perfect down to the last detail, because obviously a lot of people have put a lot of hard work in beforehand, so you don't want to go and balls it up for anybody. It's a very big client, and it's our reputation at stake. But I know there are some people that just shine when they're given a, a challenge like that, and I think she will. Before this week, Leanne didn't see the value in work and never thought she could enjoy a job. Today, she is part of a team pitching for a top advertising agency to one of their biggest clients. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? You all right? I'm all right, thank you. So thank you so much for coming over today. No problem. So I'm Margaret Manning, Chief Exec. I'm also an internet geek, you'll find that out in a second. <laughs> and I'm Leanne, I've been involved with the um, creative ideas and um, actually involved with creating this room for you today as well. And actually took the photograph on the backdrop. Very nice. <laughs> Introductions over and Leanne's up. Shall I slide around here? OK, so I did a little bit of research and the first thing I found out was that people are really lazy online. Something's too complicated or a little bit too taxing and they're going to switch off. So it's really important that their digital experience is simple, clear and like I said, it doesn't demand too much because we're all lazy. We would like grapes to be fed into our mouth if we can help it. <laughs> <laughs> As the pitch goes on, all of Leanne's hard work yeah, seems to be paying off. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, oh, fantastic. How do you feel? Amazing. It's nerve wracking, <laughs> isn't it? Nerve wracking, but yeah, feel good. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's good fun. A bit of adrenaline rush. It's like nice to be out. <laughs> I know I could do it in the end. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's good. The pitch is over, and so is Leanne's week as a working girl. From when I first met you, what's absolutely surprised me is there's no problem with hard work. I think most of the main thing was I was unsatisfied. I think that was it. It's not that I'm scared of hard work. It's just I was always unsatisfied at work before. I never thought you could feel good about work. <laughs> I think that was it. I didn't know you could have a good time. So we go to Paris for our Christmas party, <laughs> and we'd want you to come to Paris with us. I know, you're going to make me cry again. For a different reason this time. Wow. Thank you. 
Do you think this week has given you what you need to pursue the the dream that that you have to be a photographer? Yeah, sure. Well, honestly, I feel so inspired. <laughs> so inspired. I literally like. In fact, it's not that I can't wait to get get away from London, but I'm like, I, I can't wait to get back so I can actually say, come on now, like, you can do it. If Margaret can do it, I can do it. Join, you know I mean? like that kind of thing. Like. You've been brilliant to work with. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for all your hard work. We got you a little card to say thanks. Thank you very much. And also, something we hope you'll remember the experience oh, like. Oh, look at that. Nice one, thank you. Yeah, that'll go nice and proud in my squat. <laughs> I'm inspired, I'm generally very inspired. But I'm going to go back and go and do some, something instead of nothing. Oh my god, I never say that at the beginning. <laughs> Shortly after leaving Reading Room, Leanne started photographing music festivals. She now has not one, but two jobs, and has stopped claiming job seekers' allowance. Up in Manchester, it's Marie's last day following in the footsteps of her great 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 granny in high end hospitality, and she has arrived early for work. I feel really proud of myself because at the beginning of the week I wasn't even going to be there on Tuesday, never mind Saturday, so it's amazing. I really want to make Liz proud today. Morning. Morning. How did you get here early? Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> it's the day of the VIP wedding and the town hall ceremony venue needs to be Liz tailored. When you've finished here this morning, this room will be ready for the wedding ceremony. It's got to look magical. That's really what we want. That's what I want as well. <laughs> With 125 seat covers to do and over 400 candles to light, Marie's got her work cut out. I'm going to get this room looking 100% perfect. 110% perfect. Before this week, Marie had quit every job she'd ever had and didn't want to do anything but be a celeb. Today, she's a member of one of the country's top events teams, and Liz is trusting her with one of the most important jobs of the day, greeting the guests. I never ever thought on Monday that I would have you welcoming my guests at the top of the stairs, and you've got, and, but I trust you, and I think that you can do it. Yes? Yeah. Right, <laughs> okay, brilliant. Liz has to leave to go to another event, so is trusting the setup entirely to Marie and wedding planner Charlie. Just try and do everything as quick as you can. I will do. You Hi. know what you're doing in here because I'm going now. Okay. You're in charge. Okay. She's well up for it and I'm so excited and I'm giving her more responsibility than I ever thought I would give her, so God help me if it goes tits up here. But anyway, we'll see. With the wedding fast approaching, there's just time for Marie to practice greeting the guests. Good afternoon. Would you like to make your way into the banqueting suite? First door on your left. Thank you very much. And all that. <laughs> Would you like to make your way into the banqueting room? It's just through there. I sound like a rhyme. Are you for Fiona and Richard? Yes. Yeah, it's just first door on your left. There you go. The bride's about to arrive any second, so everything needs to be perfect. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. A few hours later, the party is in full swing, but the work doesn't stop for Marie. She's just been absolutely brilliant, I think. I could not have done it without her. Oh, thanks. Okay. She's thanks. a total different yeah. girl to the person that came in on Monday. I can't believe somebody can turn around and change so much in one week, but she's been absolutely brilliant. Definitely the hardest I've ever worked. I've, I've been at work for, like... 14 hours. It's the end of a very long night and the end of Marie's week as a working girl. Well, I've done it. 
<laughs> have you enjoyed it? Yeah. Have you? Mm -hmm. I'm really, really proud of you. I'm not going to cry because I'm really, Don't. really proud of you. I think you've been fabulous. I've had the most <laughs> fabulous week. <laughs> what have you learnt the most? Don't quit as soon as one little thing goes wrong. And keep going because things like this can happen. At the beginning of the week, I said, I don't think anything can change me, anyone can change me, and then it's just happened. What are you going to do on Monday? Get a job. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I'd like you to come and help me next weekend on my celebrity wedding. Are you serious? I am. Oh, my God. You've got a lot to offer, Marie, and don't waste your life because you don't get another chance. Mm -hmm. I believe in you, and I think you've done brilliantly well, and I've had the best time. Thank you. Me too. Good. <laughs> she's a gorgeous kid. She's going to go out there into the big wide world and she's going to be somebody. She is definitely going to be somebody. And I'll make sure that she gets on in life because I'll always be there for her. You know, I may have changed her life, but she certainly had a very, very marked effect on my life. This is definitely the new me now, from now on. Liz Taylor has definitely changed my life. I just want to get a job and sort my life out. Get that first paycheck and go shopping. <laughs> I can't wait. Before Marie heads home, she has one final stop she wants to make. She's headed to Filey, to the house where her great-great-great-grandma Jane Cogill ran a boarding house entertaining the glitterati of the day. Is that it? It's so weird that, like, she lived here. Mental. She might be looking down on me now. I hope she is. I think she'll be thinking, that's my girl. <laughs> Following in my footsteps. The very next week, Marie got a full-time job in a pub and she and Fletch were able to move out. Marie is happier than ever now she is working and standing on her own two feet. And that was the final in the series of Working Girls. Roxy's working day is not going well next on BBC Three in tonight's EastEnders.